Because the favor you've always done, share the videos with as many groups as 50 to 100 tonight. Let's flood the dark places of the earth with the fragrance of Jesus' grace. We also want to welcome all our campuses around the world. We are so glad to have all of you brothers and sisters all over the world connected to the service. Hey guys, get ready. We will study the word and rejoice together in the light that has been made available to us. Is there somebody excited in the service tonight? Can we celebrate the word of God with a shout? Glory! Amen! All right, grab your pen, your notebook, your Bible, and you can be seated with your sweet, smart self. Grab your phone and, you know, help us share the videos on your various platforms and pages. And let's get the word around the world. We've been examining the unique revelation of the Pauline theology. The revelation of Brother Paul. And we said the signature of the Pauline theology is in Christ. In Christ. And we've been examining these identification realities as we've been studying in the past weeks. And we still have quite some more to cover. Turn your Bibles to the book of 2 Peter chapter 3 verse number 15 and 16. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse number 15 and 16. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him hath written unto you. Next verse. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. So we began to see the credence that brother Peter lended a, an apostle of no mean repute when it comes to the, the, those, the apostles that were with Jesus from the baptism of John till the day he was taken up to heaven. One of the major apostles of no mean repute in scripture is Peter. And when Peter, such, such caliber of an apostle, will say things like this concerning brother Paul, you need to pay attention to what brother Paul has to say. He says, brother Paul spoke things that are hard to be understood and the unlearned and unstable rest with the insight, the Sophia, taken from the word Sophizo, talking about insight that was given to brother Paul concerning the Old Testament where the revelation of the Christ is concerned. We covered some territory yesterday as we began to do a little bit of word study. And yesterday we began to look at the way brother Paul dismantled the issue of the atonement. Romans chapter 5 verse 11. Romans chapter 5 verse number 11. It says, and not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. And yesterday I took time to explain to you very clearly that the word atonement was used wrongly in that verse. It should have been the word cartilage, the Greek word cartilage, which you will find yesterday I gave you the, the references. Romans chapter 11 verse 15 and 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 19. Give me that 2 Corinthians 5 19. He says concerning, you know, brother Paul talking, he says to wit that God was in Christ. The word in Christ again. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Not imputing their trespasses unto them. And had committed unto us the word of reconciliation. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Now, in, catal in, ca in, the, in, in that Greek word, catalage, it happens that it is God going towards the man who has done wrong. It is God that goes towards the man that has done wrong. You know, that Romans chapter 10 where we read a few days ago, we saw that God's catalage is in the offering of his son. So that means, therefore, that the word catalage is the exact opposite of the word atonement. It seems like, you know, the, the word kafir or kippur, God was appeased. And the way it was communicated was wrongly so. Because that was man's self-righteousness. Moses helped them to dwell in that. You know, Moses told them, if you do this and do this and do this and do this, you will qualify. 
And all through the Old Testament, we kept seeing men trying to qualify, but they never qualified because when it comes to reconciliation with God, man has nothing to offer because man is the one who is in the offense. But in the reconciliation, it's man that is appeased. It's man that is satisfied, which is the exact opposite of the word kafir. Remember I said that you should notice that Jesus chose to die not on the day of atonement because it will have been the wrong message, but he chose to die on the Passover. All right, so we took time to also see that the Passover is a day to bear the pains of others. And that was the example he used in explaining that word atonement. Now, so that verb Catalage is the word katalasso. I gave you that word yesterday, katalasso. It is the meeting of people at a point where you put value on the other person. Where you put value on the other person. Romans chapter 5 verse 10, I love the way brother Paul, you know, put the words together. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled we shall be saved by his life being reconciled we shall be saved by his life so god's meeting point is the value he gives to us catalasso catalage words of value words of valuation so Paul therefore begins to use words of balancing imbalances. And again, like we said, that is his Sophia. That is the insight of brother Paul. So what does Paul do? In an atonement, this is God, this is man, and it is assumed that man keeps bringing offerings every year. Look at the way the writer of Hebrews explains a little bit on that bringing of offering every year in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1. Hebrews chapter 10, for the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices. Now, if you are theologically thinking, you will suddenly notice something there, can never, can never with those sacrifices, because that's atonement, which they offered year by year continually, Make the commas there on to perfect. So in atonement, you keep bringing offerings every year. Every year, you keep bringing offerings every year because it never meets the need. It never satisfies the demands of justice. But in the catalasso, God evens the man by becoming flesh. So that means, as it were, he devalued himself to value man. God devalued himself to value man. Look at the way brother Paul will put the words again. You will love this. In Philippians chapter 2 verse number 5. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. Let this man be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Next verse. Who being in the form of God taught it not robbery to be equal with God. Next verse. But made himself of no reputation. He devalued himself and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. He made himself of no reputation. He devalued himself to value man. So Paul uses a term used by those who buy and sell. Bring me what is of this catalasso. How can I reconcile what you owe me with what you have? Bring the exact value. Then he brings it. So God says, this is me seen in man. I will provide it. He became the provision. God didn't provide something. God himself became the provision. He stripped himself of all rights and privileges that makes him God. So God himself became the provision. He met man at the point of man's need. That is the word reconciliation. It's more than an atonement. So that's why brother Paul doesn't use atonement, the word kapha or kippo. And for those who are not here to spell kapha, it's K-A-P-H-E-A-R, kapha. 
it has no single Greek word because Jesus didn't use that word atonement. Why will he say it? If Jesus had used kapha, he would have contradicted everything that was said about him in the law and the prophets. Because he said he came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and give his life a ransom for many. He came to die for their sins. Jesus, who is God, who came in man's place to die for man, cannot be the one that is angry. He must be kind to be able to take man's place, even though he never contributed to man's rebellion, in, in spite of the offer he made to man, and man still rejected his offer and went his own way. Yet in kindness, he took man's place. That's an act of kindness. That's not an act of anger. So Paul's letters were not to create, you know, um, uh, uh, a Christianity that just where God overlooks things. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. You need to be careful. That's why he says those that are on land, they twist the teachings of brother Paul to their own destruction. He is teaching what Jesus did. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, a word used by couples and a word used by brother Paul almost single-handedly. Nobody else used that word but Paul. Interestingly, somewhere in our minds, a lot of us, because of the things we were taught in the church world, in the religious circle, we still have an atonement mentality. And that is what, why, what, why this teaching, what it does to you, is it gradually renews your mind. As you are listening, your concepts are changing. Your mind is getting renewed. The old junk is losing value and relevance. There's a gradual transformation taking place in your understanding and in the quality of your relationship with God. If that is true, can I hear you say positive? Now, so to make things worse, my immediate audience listening to me right here in this church are Africans. And Africans believe that when you do something wrong, you should be punished. It is cultural. It is traditional that you must be punished for doing something wrong. So in an African culture, there is a mentality of atonement in the culture. That when you do something wrong, you have to cry, you have to beg. That is why confession of sin is a major issue in the African community because of the mentality of atonement. You atone. You look for how to appease God. You look for how to confess and you expect to be punished. It's an African culture. It's a thing with, with the culture of, our, of, of Africans. Now, and it's only Africans that believe that, you know, majorly. They are the major players in this thing. Yet what is called the wrath of God is man-made. That's why an African man cannot accept that God doesn't get angry. It does not make sense in Africanism that there is a God who never gets angry. It doesn't make sense. Because from the time an African child is born till he grows to adulthood and leave his father's house, he is faced with an angry father or angry mother. And he is punished and disciplined for every wrong. Sometimes he is even disciplined for what he didn't do. True or false. So we are dealing with mindsets that have embraced atonement. So that's why Catalasso and Catholic will not make quick sense to an African mindset. You know? And uh, you know... Uh, what we call the wrath of God is typified by a man's unbelief towards what God has done. It's typified by a man's unbelief towards what God has done. It's man-made. That term, the wrath of God, is man-made. So Brother Paul calls it a Catholic age 
not an atonement. <clears throat> we see similar words now in Matthew chapter 9 verse 13. Jesus will say, I am not come to desire sacrifice. What he means by I have not come to desire sacrifice is that I am not a blood paying being. Look at it. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. I don't want blood. I'm not angry. Stop bringing sacrifice to appease me. I am not an idol. You only appease your idols. They will say the gods of the land are angry. How many of you remember? Then they will say kill fowl. Kill chicken. Bring native goat. Let the elders of the village go and appease the gods in the shrine. It's an African thing. And to make matters worse, it's, it now blends with religious interpretation of God. So it settles well. It sits well with an African man. Are we teaching? It sits well with an African man. But God says, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Don't bring blood to me. I'm not angry. I am the one looking for how to calm you down. Because you are angry that I, God, didn't protect you from your disobedience. So I want to peace, appease you. I want to calm you down. Now observe also, God is saying, I am not the blood demanding being. I am a blood giving being. I do not demand blood, rather I give blood on your behalf. For my flesh is the light of life of all flesh, of all the world. So God is the giver. Observe this. Brother Paul did not expect you and I to have a different mentality. We must see God in the light of Christ. For our theology to be appropriate. We must see God in the light of Christ. For our theology to be appropriate. At the Passover table. He is the Passover. He is not the receiver of the Passover. At the Passover table. He is the Passover. He is not the receiver. So in Moses' description in Exodus 13. That lamb that was killed and the blood put on the doorpost for the Passover is God in man. The lamb that was killed and the blood was put on the doorpost is God in man. Oh yes, it will prevent the destroyer. The destroyer is an enemy of God and death came by sin. Death didn't come by God. Death came by sin. Ultimately, what God did was to protect them from the destroyer because he is not the destroyer. He cannot be the one destroying and protecting. If he's destroying, he's not protecting. If he's protecting, he's not destroying. He is the lamb that was put on the doorpost that when the angel of death sees the blood, it will pass over. Christ is our Passover. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 8. 1 <clears throat> Corinthians 5 8. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old living, neither with the living of malice and wickedness, but with the unliving bread of sincerity and truth. Verse 7 now. Look at verse 7. 1 Corinthians 5, 7. Purge out therefore the old living that ye may be a new lump as you are unliving. For even Christ, our Passover, is the sacrifice. He is sacrificed for us. He is the sacrifice. So it's God bearing the consequences of our action. 
God is the one bearing the consequences of our action. It's not God that is demanding. So listen. He is not the lion and the lamb. Because if he's the lion and the lamb, then it will mean if you sin, he kills you. Because the job of a lion is to devour and destroy. But because he loves you, he now dies for his own death. And that, that doesn't sound reasonable. He loves you. So what you did evil for, he dies the death for you. So God is the provision for man's commission. And that settles it. So when you hear the blood of Jesus was shed, again, that word is an idiom or a shorthand. The blood of Jesus was shed is an idiom or a shorthand for his life given to us in sacrifice. So if you can remove from your head blood dripping from the body of Jesus and see that blood being shed in his sacrifice or in his resurrection. And because of that sacrifice, we welcome his life into us. And that new humanity has been formed. Then what Jesus did with his blood will be clear to you. That will be God's Adam, remember? In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28. If you read John chapter 6, and you still think the blood of Jesus is to be drunk in a cup, then you miss it. He said, it is my death. So, blood of Jesus is a shorthand for his sacrifice for our sin. If you want to say Jesus sacrificed himself for our sins, the shorthand to say that is that Jesus shed his blood for me. Where is our sins? Our sins are in our hearts. That is in our old man. So his life has now been given to us. We are now new men. A new humanity that is found in him. So remove an atonement mentality. The moment you know that the heaven he went to is not man-made. The moment you know that the heaven Jesus went to is not man-made. And the temple he went to is man. The heaven he went to is not man-made. But the temple he went into with his blood is man himself. Because that is the word became flesh. That takes away your mind from what the temple should be. Then you now begin to realize that Jesus didn't go to a planet. Jesus came to man. Jesus came to man. His resurrection produced in humanity what God said before the foundation of the world. If you're with me on this page, can I have a powerful amen? Good. Now hence the word aphesis. The word aphesis. Based on that explanation, another Greek word we will explore is the word aphesis. A-P-H-E-S-I-S. Aphesis. It means to take away. To take away sin. Write this down for further study. Mark chapter 1 verse 4. Mark chapter 3 verse 26. Luke chapter 3 verse 3. Luke chapter 1 verse 77. It's called the remission of sins or forgiveness. Aphesis. The forgiveness of sins or remission of sins. In Luke chapter 4 verse 18, the word aphesis is called deliverance. To preach deliverance, he has anointed me to preach deliverance to the captives. To preach aphesis. 
which is another word for the forgiveness of sins. He didn't say to conduct a deliverance service. He didn't say to organize people for a deliverance drama to preach. So deliverance is a message preached. It is called the forgiveness of sins. It is the word aphesis. In Acts chapter 2 verse 38, it is called the remission of sins. The remission of sins. Hallelujah. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's salvation. So what they call in all those dramatic entertainment churches, what did I call them? Dramatic entertainment churches. What they call deliverance is a scam. S-C-A-M. Scam in capital letters. And those who patronize them are as stupid as those who organize them. You have been going for deliverance for five years and you have not been free. And you are still going. After they did it twice on you, shouldn't you have known that the power to free you is not there? Because if the power to free you was there first day of doing you that deliverance it shall have been settled Jesus didn't say this sign shall follow those that believe in my name they shall conduct deliverance services how do you read your bible he said in my name they shall cast out devils and of course there's a difference between casting out devils and deliverance Deliverance is a message. Casting out devils is a command. Did you read your Bible well? To cast out demons is a command out. But deliverance is a message preached. I'm anointed to preach the gospel of deliverance. To preach deliverance. Deliverance is a message. Acts 5.31 Look at how they taught it. Acts 5.31 Him God Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and aphesis forgiveness of sins. That's how they taught it. It's not an appeasement it's not an appeasing a God. Look at Acts 10, 43. Acts chapter 10, verse 43. Peter told them remission of sins. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive, shall receive remission of sins, aphesis. Acts 26, 18. Look at the way Paul will say it. Acts 26, 18. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God. Why? That they may receive forgiveness of sins. That they may receive what? Forgiveness of sins, which is deliverance, which is aphesis, which is remission, which is forgiveness of sins. And what is the resultant effect of the forgiveness of sins? When your sins are forgiven, when you are delivered, you now receive an inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. What is that inheritance? Salvation. So, aphesis is the forgiveness of sins. Or another word for forgiveness of sins is what? Deliverance. So, imagine here is Jesus. He comes to his disciples. He bows down. He removes his clothes. He ties a towel. Oh, Lord, don't wash me. Don't wash me. You are my master. He said, no. If I wash you not, you have no part in me. So his blood is not towards God. His blood 
is towards man. Who needs the blood? God or man? What's the duty of the blood? To wash away? What can wash away my sins? What can make me whole again? Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood. So if the blood is for the washing of sins, who needs the blood, God or man? So the blood of Jesus, was it to appease God or to appease man? Exactly, because God is not the one angry. Now, stay with me because we're going to get into some things you will, you will enjoy in a few minutes. So his blood is towards man. That's why it's called a cathelage or a catalasso. It's not an atonement. And his blood is not physical dripping liquid. A preacher came to this church and talked about how that they removed blood from Jesus' hand, removed blood from Jesus during, uh, during circumcision, removed blood from Jesus' side, removed blood from Jesus' hands and from Jesus' toes, and that the blood is liquid. And this church did not receive the message well. He got angry with me after that service, and from that day, our relationship never remained the same. Is it my fault that ignorance is undressing you in public? He said, no, your church didn't receive me. Your church didn't receive me. He said, you told them that the blood is not liquid. And I told them the blood is liquid. I said, but is the blood liquid? How many pints of blood will Jesus have in his body that the whole world is drawing from? Because if Jesus is a man, which he is, and his blood is man's blood quantity, then the whole world cannot be removing the blood. That's a shorthand. Don't be angry at me. Be angry at you. Next time do your research well. Before you stand on Power City pulpit. A preacher told me, even if you pay me to preach in Power City, I will not come. <laughs> he said, I will not come. I have told everybody. I, even if you pay, I will not come. I said, I will not even pay. Do your homework. The blood cannot be liquid. How many pints will you withdraw? How many? Okay, if the whole world is withdrawing blood from Jesus, and Jesus is a man, how many pints does he have? And if you say his blood is supernatural, if it is supernatural, then it cannot be liquid. That means it is not matter. Which also means it is not what you are thinking. So that's why you don't sprinkle the blood. Where, which bucket is it in? That you are... Fsh, 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 fsh. You see cockroach? The blood of Jesus. Fsh. Flies. The blood of Jesus. Fsh. It will have finished before you were born. I'm teaching good. It's not liquid. His blood is his life given for us. His sacrifice in his death. His blood is eternal life in his resurrection. Eternal life in his resurrection. So as he kneels down and brings out the water, I see his blood shed for my sins because the water was a shorthand of saying, as I'm washing your feet with water, that is how I will wash your sins with my life. It was not giving us a feet washing service. He was not giving us instruction to start washing people's legs. If you read that scripture and all you understand is to be washing people's legs, you have joined the, the battalion of the Pharisees. He was saying 
The same way I'm washing your leg with water. That's why I told Peter, if I don't wash you, you have no part in me. How can you have a part in me just by washing your leg? It was a shorthand of speaking about how that when you allow his sacrificial work to be applied in your heart, you become a part of his body. Am I teaching good? Stay with me. <clears throat> so, as I read the Bible more, I see that the spirit of God is now called the blood. It is the spirit of God that is the blood according to brother Paul. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 11. Observe. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 11. And such were some of you. But you are washed. You are sanctified. You are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus. How are you washed? And by the spirit of our God. So you are washed by the indwelling of the spirit. So the indwelling of the spirit is the application of the blood. So the spirit is the blood of Jesus. Teaching good? We are sanctified by that spirit. So the blood and the spirit are interchangeably used for the life of Jesus in his resurrection. Paul will use blood because it is a shorthand of saying this is upon his resurrection by his death. But if you use by his spirit, you should have, have that Bible sense to know what he's talking about. By his spirit means by his blood. By his blood means by his spirit. So, to think that the blood was towards God and because God saw blood, he is no more angry. I want blood. I want blood. I want blood. It's okay. God, take blood. God, it's okay. Cool me down. I have seen blood. He's not a vampire. It's not God that wanted blood. God is not the kidnapper. It is only a kidnapper you pay ransom to. You don't pay ransom to God because God is not a kidnapper. He's not the one collecting ransom. He is the ransom. Jesus is the ransom for our sins. So the ransom cannot be the kidnapper. The ransom is paid to the kidnapper. He is the ransom. Tebala. Soteria 6. If you want further details, Soteria 6 and Soteria 4 has all of these in further exegesis. Now, Ephesians 1 7. You are forgiven your sins according to the riches of his grace. According to the riches of his grace. Colossians chapter 1 verse 14. Colossians 1.14 In whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins. Hebrews 9.22 You can read at home and Hebrews 10.18 because of time. Now can we answer some questions quickly? So when Jesus told that lady that prostitute that time in the book of Luke 7.46 and 48 your sins are forgiven. Was it available or possible? It was possible. Correct. So in Luke 5.20, when he says, your sins are forgiven, was it available or possible? Possible. But available when he sheds his blood and gives himself. So before he died and rose, forgiveness was possible, but became available upon his resurrection. Correct. I will have said clap for yourself, but wait first. After service, you clap. <laughs> so it's, poss it's possible, but not available. So you can see why Paul will say that Abraham believed God 
It was reckoned. He now used a very skillful word in his Sophia. The insight of Brother Paul. He used the word logizomai. Logizomai. L-O-G-I-Z-O-M-A-I. Logizomai. I love that word. That is, Abraham didn't cash it. But it was credited to his account. Logizomai. That there is credit on your bank account doesn't mean you have the cash in your hand. How many of you have gone to bank before to withdraw money and bank told you we don't have enough cash, come tomorrow? Has it happened to you before? Well, it has happened to me before. Especially when you are withdrawing quality money. I didn't say anything. The bank will, sometimes they'll tell you, in this branch, we are out of cash. But if you can be patient, come in the afternoon or in the evening, or we will only have cash next tomorrow, except you want to go to our head office. Then the person will say, okay, let me wait. It doesn't mean it is not there. It is credited, but he has not cashed it. So it's possible, but it's not available. So Abraham believed God and righteousness was credited to his account. But he didn't cash it until Jesus rose from the dead. Am I preaching here? Are you following? Now stay with me. <clears throat> so now he used Abraham to explain. That the promise was not to his seed as of many, but to his seed as one, even as to Christ. Because Abraham was blessed in Christ. And Christ didn't come till he hung on the tree and rose from the dead. So Abraham's justification was credited into his account, but became available when Jesus rose from the dead. Look at how Jesus spoke, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. John 3, 16, not Joshua. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Now, when Jesus said this in John 3, 16, in his encounter with Nicodemus at night, was it available or possible? Because he had no reason. But he spoke as if it has already happened. Because that's an Ihori statement. Now to spell Ihori is A-I-O-R-S-T. A-I-O-R-S-T. Ihori statement. That is a statement you make of what will happen in the future as though it has happened in the present. Ihori is in theology. He spoke the reality even though it was not yet available. So Paul's cartilage is the exact opposite of the kafir or kippur. And I would rather say it is not just the opposite but the explanation of it. That temple they were taking animals to was not where God was. The animal is God himself. He is appealing to, to be in man as an animal, the lamb. So he died, he comes into our heart, then we become the temple of God. The temple of his service. The temple of his sacrifice. The temple of his life. When he rose from the dead. I am the temple of God. I am the temple of his service. I am the temple of his sacrifice. I am the temple of his life. Glory to God. Paul's language explains all of that. Are you getting blessed? Now, Paul uses another word. Apolotrosis. Apolotrosis. A-P-O-L-U. A-P-O-L-U. T-R-O-S-I-S. Apolotrosis. Is the word redemption. Redemption. If you are not careful again, remember brother Paul's, you know, Sophia. You, you will misunderstand it because Peter was right. If you are not careful with the way brother Paul plays with words intelligently, you will twist the scriptures to your own destruction. Apollotrosis is the word redemption. 
Redemption. That's the meaning of apologosis. Again, these are words of commerce. Everyday language for buying and selling. In, catalo in catalasso, value is involved. In catalasso, value is involved. Let me ask all of you a question. How many of you know that the value of a commodity is reflected in the price? Huh? Huh? How many of you know that this my handkerchief and this my microphone are not of the same value? How many of you know that my microphone will bite a thousand handkerchiefs? How many of you know that? Well, you may not know because you do not know how much I bought this microphone. If you were to know the price of this microphone, you will have answered yes three times. Yes, yes, yes. But because you are thinking this microphone is that type that they use in naming ceremony for you. Where sometimes when they are talking, Radio FM will intercept. Yeah. That's why you are thinking, can he really buy the hanky? Don't worry. <laughs> Me that bought the microphone, I know how much I bought it. So I know it can buy a thousand handkerchiefs and it will not still have exhausted the account of this microphone. So this microphone is higher in value than the handkerchief. So the price placed on the commodity reflects the value of that commodity. When it was time for God I, don't, I, I want to calmly say it. I don't want to say the way it's doing me. When it was time for God Almighty to buy you back from the kidnapper, the value placed on you, nothing on earth was of that value. Silver, gold, nothing was of that value. Sapphires, platinum, nothing was of that. Oil wells in the Niger Delta, the the, the diamonds in Congo, the golds in Ghana, none could buy, nothing on earth. All the earth put together with everything in the earth could not pay for you. You were too expensive. It only took God's life to buy you back. That's how expensive you are. And that's why you don't allow any demon make noise around you. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm very expensive. Now, keep that somewhere. Let's proceed. <clears throat> so, catalasso is value. Value is involved. Apolotrosis has a word, apol apolua. Apolua. A-P-O-L-U-A. Apolua means to separate. It means to take from. Before we get to that, it has a Hebrew meaning of the word. That Apollua in Hebrew is the word Gal. Gal. G-A-A-L. It is used 105 times. Firstly, you will see that word in Genesis 48 verse 16. Genesis 48 verse 16. Put it up. The angel which redeemed me from what? All evil. So redemption is from evil. You are not redeemed from God. You are redeemed from evil. The angel who redeemed me from all evil. Whatever you use the word redeemed for must be what is evil or what is not good. That's why it's used for slavery. Redeemed from all evil. Look at Exodus 6 verse 6. Exodus chapter 6 verse 6. Wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord. And I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will rid you out of their bondage. And I will redeem you with a stretch out arm with great judgment. So the one redeeming you cannot be the one collecting the prize. The part God keeps playing is, I will redeem. I will redeem from, 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 from. Meaning, he's not the one that 
we are being redeemed from. Rather, he is the one redeeming us from, and whenever the word is used, it is from evil. Teaching good? Paul uses Moses' girl. We are not redeemed from God. That's the point we're making. So Jesus' sacrifice cannot be to appease God. You will see in Luke 21, 28, the word is used, redemption. But mostly, Apollotrosis was used by Brother Paul. Romans 3, 24, for sins. Romans 3, 24, for sins. Romans 8, 23. This body, mortal. This body, mortal. Comfortable. I mean, uncomfortable. Subjected by sin and mortality will be redeemed. Romans 8, 23. Romans 8, 19 to 20. Then look at Brother Paul again. 1 Corinthians 1, 30. 1, 30. Christ, our redemption. Christ, our redemption. Then, Ephesians 1, 7. Redemption in his blood. Then, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. Then Colossians chapter 1 verse 14. Then Hebrews chapter 1 verse 15. You can read those scriptures at home. Are you following? So redemption cannot be towards God. It has to be towards sin. Redemption towards the flesh. Redemption towards death. Redemption towards, immort towards mortality. And redemption towards evil things. Redemption is not used towards God. It's used towards man's creation of selfishness. Man's creation of selfishness. Redemption is used towards sin, flesh, death, mortality. So, Brother Paul's wisdom is to take all those parallels and illustrations. If you're writing, that's not a point to me. Brother Paul's wisdom is to take all those parallels and illustrations and bring them into proper explanation. Let's conclude here. First John chapter 2 verse 2. A word used by brother Paul. I mean brother John. Single handedly. It is a word in the Greek called. Hilas. Hilasmos. 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 H-I-L-A-S-M-U-S. Hilasmos. Propitiation. Hilasmos. Propitiation for. So if you say propitiation for, that is who needs it. Propitiation for our sins. We are the ones in need of propitiation. Like I said, the word apollotrosis is like a market of slaves where you pay to release a slave, commercial. Or you get someone out of bondage. So whatever you say next, Sin, that is the slave owner. The kidnapper of man is sin. That is the slave on, owner. Death is the second slave owner. And that is the danger we are being redeemed from. There is no word in the Bible that says we are redeemed from God. But rather, we are redeemed by God from sin, from death. Because by one man sin and death by sin. Man created his own destruction 
and then hopelessly and helplessly cries for help and cannot be helped. So God comes down to man's rescue from man's self-destruct, which is sin and death. So the blood of Jesus was paid to sin and death. That is why once a man receives Christ, he is free from sin and death forever. Am I teaching good? He last must for propitiation for our sins. First John 4 verse 10. Put it up. First John chapter 4 verse 10. Herein is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation, the hilasmos, for our sins. So, who gave him God? For what reason? Our sins. Our bondage from the devil. He gave Jesus to free us from our sin, our bondage from the devil. So Jesus, the sacrificial lamb, offered his blood to free us from sin. So the blood is the payment to sin, bondage, and Satan. When you receive Christ, sin, bondage, and Satan can no longer no longer can no longer have a hold on you. They are fully paid for time and eternity. That's why sin cannot take a man that has Christ to hell. If a man that has Christ goes to hell, Hell will become heaven. <laughs> Honey, Joe Biden is Air Force One. Have I taught you that? Who is Air Force One? Joe Biden, the president of America. Portus. He's Air Force One. Air Force One is not a plane. Air Force One is the president. Because it is the plane that the president enters that becomes Air Force One. If Joe Biden, the president of America, comes to a quiet bomb today and enters Ibom Air, the moment his leg steps into Ibom Air, Ibom Air becomes Air Force One. From that moment, the entire American security system begins to control that plane until Joe Biden comes out. If Joe Biden enters Keke Napep, that Keke becomes Air Force One. You are not following. So it is not a plane that is Air Force One. It is the president that is Air Force One. So anywhere he enters becomes Air Force One. Heaven is a person. His name is Jesus. Anywhere Jesus enters, it becomes heaven. So if a believer with Jesus enters hell, hell becomes heaven. If I'm teaching, shout, I hear, I hear. Sit down, let me close this. So Paul knew, John knew, that the temple, the tent is man. So the sacrifices are for man. Paul uses a similar word. Hilasion. Hilasion. From the word hilasmos. Hilasion is spelled as H-I-L-A S-I-O-N. Hilasion. From the word hilasmos. Romans 3.25. Put it up for me. Romans 3.25. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. To declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past. How? Through the forbearance of God. God has set forth someone to be a propitiation. That is to be a satisfaction. 
God set him forth. God did not accept him. God is not the one receiving. God is the one giving. He set him forth. God gave it. It is the same word in Hebrews 9, 5. Put it up. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 5. And over it the cherubims of glory, shadowing the mercy seat, of which we cannot now speak particularly. The place of mercy. Imagine the temple had a mercy seat as though God is taking blood to have mercy. Whereas it ought to show the effect of God's mercy on us. Which is the shedding of the blood of Jesus on our behalf. So Leviticus 16.5 will be God in man offering the sacrifice for man. God in man offering the sacrifice for man. Not man towards God offering the sacrifice. It was God offering the sacrifice. Jesus, you know, obviously looked it, used it in Luke 18 verse 30. You remember that parable that Jesus gave? <laughs> the Pharisee and the publican. Huh? The Pharisee came to the temple and said, God, I thank you that I'm not like that sinner. The publican came in, bowing his head down. He could hardly look up. And he said, God, God, be my animal. Be my animal. Because Jewish people know that when you come to the temple like that, on the record of sin, you come with an animal. You can't come empty-handed. You come with an animal. So, this publican didn't have an animal. So he said, God, I'm a sinner. Be my animal. The public can say, I don't need an animal. I'm a good guy. Then the Bible says the, the publican went home forgiving. What boldness. Jesus taught that in a parable. That when you come to God, God becomes the animal for your forgiveness. What a teaching. You don't bring the animal. Because the animal typifies God. So God is actually the animal on your behalf. Are we teaching here? That's the word. He last komai. He last komai. Provide the sacrifice for me. He last komai. It is spelled as H I L A S C O M A I. He last komai. What a teaching. A man comes into the temple and he says, You give me the sacrifice. And Jesus says, The guy goes home justified. Because that's exactly what is done. God provided the sacrifice for our sins. And so sin has no dominion over us anymore. Those words are the words from Helios. It means to stop. You know, Peter said to Jesus, Go away. Stop. Don't say they will kill you. Not while I am here. Stop. And Jesus said, get it behind me. Okay? Now, be, what he meant is, be it far from you. The word helios, H-I-L-E-O-S. Same word used in Hebrews 2.17. Jesus' sacrifice. That same word helios is used in Hebrews 8.12. I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. Meaning, I will take it far away from them. So the order is changed. Having done that for us, it now makes sense why Paul will say, if your enemy do you evil, do him good. You are heaping coals of fire on his head. There's a syntax problem there. The original say, you are heaping coals of fire on your head. That's the original. It is not on the head of the person doing you evil that the coals are coming on. The coals are coming on your head doing good for evil because you are the one bearing the brunt. 
like Jesus bore the brunt on our behalf. We did wrong. We should have been punished. But Jesus took the brunt on our behalf. So the same way like your father, when people do you evil, bear the brunt on their behalf that you may be the children of your father. I don't know if I'm communicating. That's the meaning of coals of fire. In other words, you are doing good to the man who has done evil. Just like he bore the sacrifice for our sins. That will be Christian living through us. Which is Brother Paul's ecclesiology. Remember, Brother Paul's soteriology, it is for the purpose of ecclesiology. Now, how we now live, having been saved, we now live the Christ life. The death of Jesus is for our sins. And the death of Jesus is also for our example. It is for our sin. It is also for our example. What a class. Jacob Abba. Ila Manohos. Hege Bozaga. Ole de Boya. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. Uh, get on your feet. Let's shout some glory tonight. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. How many of you are grateful for what Jesus has done for us? Lift your two hands. Let's begin to give him thanks for all he has done. I want to see you appreciating God with a heart of gratitude. He that speaketh in tongues, give it thanks very well. and the Latoka Piazza as a portala atomongo poske and Talo Dariala Ayadaba Shata Talaba Dambuske and Toma di Amber Gadasa and Yalante Tose Katangraha a Yelle Separatala a Yonko Sosa Labande Shate as Kataboro in Talabanda Sandor Dohi and La Patalanga da Ayaposo Talagadengo in Protocasa Laba Ayendo Shataledo Ereta. Ayatatopenzo, <laughs> Salia, Rianda Dakata, the Apostle Paul, the Raposa, Ayata Tondo, or Tonda Letter de Hia, and the Pia Prando Koske, the Soda da da da, Ayapansa Bilamba Tondo, the Posta Tata, the Atlanta Tango, the Soda Toronto, Ayatanta Ria, and the Gatampa Tonda de Hata, Hata, the Santa Dosha, the Santa Dosha, the Santa Dosha, the Santa Dosa, Capio Tonga, Esso Falondo, 